This Past Weekend. What's up, guys? Welcome to This Past Weekend follow-up. Um, you may remember we had a call that came in from Andrew on the hotline uh, having some issues with his wife. Uh, this is uh, a recap of that right here. My name is Andrew from Prince Edward Island, Canada. I want to address a dark arts. My wife is overweight. I was overweight. We both agreed on it. I've lost the weight, and she hasn't. And there's no way for me to bring it up without being the asshole or the emotional ab abusive man. But I'm just not attracted to her, and I don't want to fuck her. So I do turn to porn a lot. I don't know. I'm just attracted to a certain thing. And she was it, and now she's not. And I don't know how to tell her to. she's got to get back to that. And you guys called in with some pretty awesome suggestions for him. Uh, we try and deal in suggestions here because, well, advice is, I mean, that's advice. Any, everybody got advice, you know, but nobody would want to take advice. But suggestions, well, it's possible, you know. Suggestions leave room for possibility. I think I find that's just that's just my suggestion. But uh, you guys called in and gave some awesome suggestions for uh, Andrew, and here are some of those. If you're unhappy with your chick because of the way she looks, at no point, at no point, do you tell her it's because of her fucking weight. Find another avenue. Your wife, she don't want to be fat and overweight, and by you losing the weight, guess what that does? That makes her feel more shitty and more insecure. And in her mind, because you lost the weight, it's going to make it harder for her, right? try to get his wife to go with him to the gym, you know, try to persuade her, say, I don't want to go to the gym by myself. It'll be a lot easier if we go together. We can motivate each other. I would say to Andrew, if him and his wife mind fuck ever, I don't know for Andrew if that's the truth for his wife. So if he has um, issues in that department, that might be what's causing a lot of the regret or resentment. And now we're going to actually call Andrew right now. I want to call Andrew and check back in with him and uh, and see what's going on. So let's give him a buzz right now. Hello? Hey, Andrew, this is uh, Theo, man. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Theo. What's up, brother? Oh, I'm doing well today, man. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Nice. And you're, and you're out there in Newfoundland? Prince Edward Island. It's next to Newfoundland. And so are they, are they your... Are they kind of your arch rivals over there or how does that work out no we all get along very well wow i like that man you know how they say uh you know how they say southern hospitality yeah in canada it's east coast hospitality all the provinces on the east coast very hospitable so wow so it's a little bit of a um it's like an inverse and a sideways when you switch that southern hospitality with you guys that's right that's awesome man and and uh, and I appreciated the, your call uh, that you made into the hotline um, about some issues that, that were going on with uh, in your home there. And we had a lot of uh, callers that responded in. Um, how did you feel about that overall? I felt the first caller made me feel very conflicted. Because mm -hmm. he, he slapped me with some harsh truth. Like, like, instead of looking at her, you should be looking at yourself. Like, what? has she put up with of yours all these years. <laughs> and that really turned my stomach like thinking about what she put up with of mine. And uh, then the next caller, I believe, was the marriage or relationship counselor. Yep. And his, his advice was just bang on. Hmm. Yeah, he came <laughs> in because they got that black belt. Some of those, those counselors, they got that, you know, they have that educated black belt that they're coming in. And they just kick you in the throat. That's right, bro. They kick you in the throat That's with those right. facts. And then that last girl who was talking about my fucking as yeah. opposed to actual fucking yeah. just blew my mind. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, so what's going on now? Because that's a look, man. That's a real pro. Like that's a real issue. It's like. You know, you start to adjust and, and you get going. And if your spouse doesn't get going, I can imagine that that, you know, some resentment starts to build. And um, what's going on now with your scenario there? Just this morning, whenever I was at work on my first break, I had a text waiting on my phone from her saying, I'm down five pounds. Ooh. So she's working out. She's getting off the weight. She's doing her thing. And it all started... Right after I got that advice from, from your podcast, 
I, I shit you not, I, I put into effect a little bit from each collar, mm -hmm. and everything just started to get better in my home. Wow. My mood, my wife's mood, my kids' moods, everything just kind of flipped just enough mm -hmm. for the sun to start shining. It, I just, I can't express enough what, what you are doing is a real friggin' thing. Thanks, man. Uh, I appreciate that. That makes me feel, you know, that makes me feel good um, to hear that. But I'm glad to hear that, man. I, I, I'm learning every time these people are calling in with suggestions, I learn as well. So I appreciate you for putting your, uh, y you know, what's going on out there on the table. Yeah, it was it was really weird because I just went ahead and did it. And mm. then after I did it, I'm like, oh, my God, what if somebody I know listens to this? That was pretty hard. <laughs> And, uh, but after everything started to get better, I told my wife anyway that I made the call. And mm -hmm. I said, look, I don't want you to listen to it. I was really dumb. I was really harsh. All I want to say is that random people actually responded <laughs> and I put it into place and has it not gotten better? And she's like, oh my God, this last week has been so much better. Wow, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause your wife probably, you know, I mean, your wife probably really loves you and, uh, and it's obviously that, that you know that you care and and you guys are trying to make some cool stuff happen, man. So I appreciate you, you know, putting that out there with us and letting us, uh, you know, just letting us have a, have a window into what's going on, you know. Man, if just one person listens to this and goes, "Oh my God, maybe I'm going to share my thing and I can get help too," yeah, if they do. Then I'm then I'm that's it. That, I'm done. I'm that's good for me. Well, look, man. I mean, <clears throat> you made me think about this. It made me think that. If I'm in a relationship and that things are going and we want to make goals or we want to do things that if the other person, if, if, if it's, if only one of us is being able to really take the lead at a time that we got to find a way to try to bring the other along with us, um, you know, because we can easily start to kind of compare ourselves. And I think it's just human nature to do that. Um, but, you know, I commend you, man. I commend you for taking some contrary action. You know, you're taking suggestions of strangers and, you know implementing those up there in the great white north that shit's pretty wild yeah I, I was thinking about that i was like it's so weird like if my wife would have suggested that i make all the that i made all the changes i made i would have never listened <laughs> just these random people from all over north america give me suggestions i'm like yeah fuck it i'm gonna try it <laughs> Man, I, dude, I cannot, I cannot feel you a hundred percent more than I am right now. Like, it's so weird, man. Sometimes, just a stranger tell, you know, sharing something makes us, it cracks into us where we can, like you said, like we can see the light a little, you know. And that's what this was. It was just these people. I don't know what it was. I just needed to hear what they said, and and I implemented it. And God damn it, it worked. <laughs> Man, that's cool, bro. You got me fired up, dude. I was just going to probably watch another episode of Dateline Murder Mystery right now. But instead, I might get up and go for a run, bro. So I appreciate it. That's awesome, bro. Thank you so much for making me a part of this. Hey, I really appreciate that. And so does my wife. You bet, man. She's five pounds less. She sounds hotter already. She sounded hot before, but she's coming in a little spicy now, brother. That's for sure. Oh, that's right, bro. If you guys don't work out, man, send her down to Mississippi, man. We'll find her a good man down here, you know? <laughs> All right, Andrew, have a good one, man. You too, Theo. Take care. And by the way, no offense, fucking awesome. Five stars. Oh, thanks, bro. I appreciate that, man. You guys have a good weekend. God bless. All right, cheers, Andrew. Man, that's pretty cool, huh? That was pretty cool. That was probably one of the neatest follow-ups. Um, and I hadn't talked to Andrew before. That was the first time I ever spoken to him. So we communicated over text message and... uh and that was it. But you know what? What I could even hear while I was talking to him, I could just hear that. I mean, first of all, that dude expressed some. I mean, he had willingness. You know, he had willingness. And after he listened, you know, he said the first call kind of shook him a little bit. And, you know, and one kind of, you know, hit him with the hard truths. And then, you know, then you had the young lady that called and kind of flipped the script on him as to way to even, per, you know, the mind fucking like, wow. But he was willing to listen to that. And that is where, you know, that's where change can start to occur. And, and not even change, but that's where you can start to hear suggestions. You know, when you're willing. 
you know, you just have to be willing. Because it's easy to sit there and buck up, you know, and say, nah, nah, I got this, I got this, I got this. Well, look, but sometimes you have to look at where, where has I got this gotten me? You know, a lot of times it's gotten to us into a place where we don't have it. You know, we don't need always advice from other people, but sometimes when people suggest something, because I find that suggestions make us feel not talked down to, but they make us feel like a part of. You know, because I don't want to hear from somebody always that knows better than me. But I want to hear from somebody, but sometimes I can only hear from someone who, who isn't trying to teach me, but is trying to be there with me as I learn, I guess, if that makes sense. I don't know. I get a little lost sometimes on my own thoughts. Um... But yeah, you know, Andrew was willing to listen to these people's thoughts. You know, I've never been in that situation. You know, I never had a wife and we made a plan and, you know, and she wasn't able to get to it. And, and maybe I wasn't seeing all the things that she is doing. And, you know, I got caught up in my own stuff. And now he's walking into his house, man. He said there's a lighter vibe in there. And he's feeling better, you know. And that means a lot because that's infectious. That's infectious. When he walks, when I know that a man's walking into his house, and I'm sure anybody that's listening to this right now, you know that a man is walking into his house and his home is a better place today. Because what? I didn't, dude, I didn't even do anything. Uh, people just shared some suggestions. That's powerful. And that's where you got, that's where for me I can see the power of um, people sharing. You know, and sharing without e without the without really ego of reward. You know, the people that were calling in with with real suggestions, they weren't, you know, trying to be goofy. They weren't trying to shine the light on them. They were just trying to, you know, it seemed like to genuinely try and offer something or a different point of, of view. And a little bit of that light got through there. Bam, Andrew's trying it. Will this work forever? Will he have other problems in the future? Will his wife have other problems? Yeah, they probably will. But you know, for one moment, we're sitting here, and uh, and together we're kind of fucking, you know, we petting this cat as a group, dude. You know, you see one dude off in the distance petting a cat, you're like, ooh, that guy, what's going on over there? But you see a bunch of people petting a cat, then what? Then you know that that might be magic. But uh, thank you guys for checking in on this past follow-up. Um, and subscribe on YouTube. If we get to uh, 30,000 subscribers, I'm going to drop some new comedy stuff on here that you haven't seen before, a new comedy video um, of stand-up. And, uh, and thank you guys so much. You can always hit the hotline with an issue that you're having and uh, or suggestion for somebody else, uh, 985-664-9503. Uh, that voicemail is always open, um, and, um, and it's always checked. It may take us a day or two to get there to check it. So this isn't 911. You know, if your house is on fire, don't hit us up. I suggest you get in there with some water. But if your soul is kind of steaming a little, hit that hotline. You know? Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good weekend or good week or whenever you're watching this or summertime, whenever. Winter. All right. Bye-bye.